our sports show. This is episode 745. Um, we're joined uh, alongside with one of our co-hosts for, for the team, Vedant from Global K Media, and we're joined by special guest, basketball player from Indi Indonesia, Lester Prosper. He's a center, but I feel like he can play multiple positions in the game. So I just want to say thank you for joining the show today. Truly an honor. How are you and your family doing so far during the tough situation, and where are you currently located? Miami, man, and we're, do nice. we're doing we're, we're doing well. We're doing very well. Nice. Um, before we get started, I just want to uh, say my prayers and thoughts are with DMX family and friends. Uh, prayers up to RIP DMX. He's obviously one of the best in the rap game, so I just want to give a prayers to them. Um, but um, so I'm going to let Vedan start off here first. Yeah, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Vedan, the 14-year-old president of Global Comedia. And um, thank you, Nathan, for having me back um, on the show. Honored to be here. First and foremost, I want to take you back to your childhood. Talk about what else, what other activities there were besides basketball. Um, well, I did as, as a child, I did, um, I did a little bit of cricket, a lot of cricket, not a little bit, oh, wow. a lot of cricket. Um, I did a lot of track. And, um, and that's it, man. Just always staying active, you know, and uh, stayed outside. You know, running around stuff that you don't see uh, the 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 younger guys that are doing today. They they're not really outside. They're more on their phones and video games and all types of other stuff. But you know, uh, me growing up, we had to be outside running, running, um, doing track, playing cricket. Hmm. So um, I, um, my we're all of us are from India here. Uh, my family and his family. So and cricket's big in India. So explain to me what was it like playing playing cricket and how how tough was that first? But what was the what was the process like playing cricket? How was it what? How was it playing? How was the process like playing cricket? How tough was that? Was it at first cricket playing the sport of cricket? Um. Well, it it wasn't tough for me, man, because I really loved the game, um, and it was it was just fun. You know, once something is fun for you, you don't feel like it's you know. Um, you don't feel like it's really hard work. You just, you, you do it as, as, it's, as it's second nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you want to do that as a kid? Was that kind of your goal to go professional there? Yep, that was my Did goal. That's all kind of fit in. Yeah, it was my goal to be a professional cricket player. I was pretty close hmm. until I moved to New York at uh, 11, 11 years old. Oh, wow. So for you, um, so while you were playing, working on your on your craft in basketball, who who is that one person do you had growing up as a role model in the NBA, or um, who who is that one person that you had growing up in the NBA like a role model? Well, um, you know, we had um, well, I had, I always looked at Akeem Olajuwon, mm -hmm. uh, Chris Bosh, of course, um, mm -hmm. and Kev and Kevin Garnett, you know. Then, 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 um, to add to that, we had, um, uh, Tim Duncan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tim Duncan was a monster. Um, and, and the Admiral David Robinson. Hmm. At what point did you start taking basketball seriously? Like that was what you knew you wanted to do. What age was that for you? Probably around 17, 18. Hmm. Yeah. It was the, I think it was around my sophomore year in college. Yeah, so uh, why, So after, um, explain to me, after your college career, um, did you go through like the NBA draft process, like the combine and all, and um, obviously you went a different route playing overseas, but just take me back to after your college days, did you go through the draft process? Um, I went through the draft process, but I didn't go to any, um, I didn't go to, I just did a lot of workouts. Okay. You know, I did workouts with the Suns, Boston Celtics, Philadelphia 76s. Um, who else did I do workouts with? And I think uh, the New York Knicks. And it was um, another team, but I'm not, I forgot. I completely forgot. Obviously, you, you had a career where you've, you've played in a dozen plus countries. Can you talk about the difficulties of throughout your career having to constantly transition, constantly move um, to an unknown place? Well, what you have to do first, um, and this is, 
a message to um, to the rookies that are coming from that are making a transition from college to overseas. Um, you have to be able to respect the culture. That's number one. Um, just listen, listen to the coach, um, entertain because basketball is about entertain entertainment and entertaining. Um, also, just have to have fun, have fun and and um, play as hard as you can or play as smart as you can, you know, and, um, you know, it's really, I learned this later down in my career, but I'm going to, I'm going to share this knowledge to the guys that are coming out now. So you just have to respect the culture and, and appreciate um, where you're playing and, um, you know, always ask questions, ask questions to the coaches, ask questions to the, to the, um, the trainers, um, to older guys on your team and see, you know, always, just always ask questions to see how you can develop your game and how you can become better and, and um, participate in and um, lead in a team to, to a successful season. Hmm. So obviously uh, you shoot lefty. So take me, <laughs> take me back to the process. Uh, when did you decide to, uh, to start, start shooting lefty? And obviously you got like Chris Bosh, he shoots lefty, James Harden, all these uh, lefty shooters. So when did, when did you decide to shoot lefty? Well, well, I'm naturally left-handed, so, you know, I started doing everything with my left. Now I could go left and right. Oh, wow. You know, I had, I had a conversation when I was younger with Lamar Odom, mm -hmm. and, you know, he said to me, uh, if they can't stop the left, keep going left, you know, but always, you always have to have a counter. You know, um, a trainer named Jerry Powell from New York, you know, he trained Kobe and all that. He always... um you say you just always have to have that counter, you know, and a lot of these guys, they go to their strong, their strong hand, but if you cut off the strong hand, they have a counter. So I have a counter. Hmm. And that's my right hand, of course. Obviously being in all the places that you've been playing in all the places that you play, played in, you're going to meet a lot of cool people. You're going to be able to have conversations with people like Lamar Odom can you talk about the experience of going somewhere new and making relationships that help you both in basketball and outside of it? Um, it's just respecting the culture, um, respecting, um, you know, your teammates, respecting uh, the coach, you know, also having a, a, a good communication status with your coach and, and your teammates. And, um, you know, so things so 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 things run smoothly. You have to work together so things run smoothly. So, you know, it wasn't hard. Mm. It was it was kind of like it was kind of like in the beginning it was kind of shaky because I'm I'm new to it, you know. But um, once you start, once you start the process of grinding and grinding and grinding and um, improving in your game, um, you start. You know, you go through the trials and tribulations, the ups and downs, you know, you will start noticing um, how to, you know, to to make things a lot better than they are currently, you know. Hmm. So obviously you started your playing career in 2011. So um, how great for you to uh, to be in this position right now and being able to play the game that you love and. Um, this, this, this explains to me how grateful are you to be in this position right now? I'm very, very grateful. Very, very grateful. Um, all the hard work I've put in over the years, you know, it's, you know, I'm very, very grateful to be in the position that I'm in and it's, it's going to get better. I know I'm, I'm 32, you know, but I feel, I feel like I'm 25, you know, I take care of my body, you know, um, it's, it's the dieting, the, the, the consistent training, mm -hmm. you know, um, the, the smart training that I have done, you know, and I'm just very, very grateful to be in this position now. You've obviously gotten a chance to represent your home country, Indonesia, on the national team a lot. Can you talk about what kind of honor that is to be able to represent your home country, especially um, to be able to wear that jersey? It's, it's an honor. It's, it's a big, big honor. Um, when you're representing a country, it's, you're going out there, you're, you're going against the best of each and every country that you're playing against. So, you know, just to be on that stage, 
you know, um, your country has put you in a position to to be in, in that stage and, and and to just represent and you have people at home cheering you on and mm-hmm. you know it's 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 super 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 amazing um and it's fun so you know sometimes you know you have the ups and downs you know like uh if you if you you have a bad quarter or if you start out the game bad and you know, but at this, the same time, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. So you have to try to finish as strong as possible. You have to try to 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 do whatever it takes to help your team win, you know? So it's, it's speaking of playing for your country, obviously uh, the fans overseas, they go crazy for the, for the players and for the team. So for you, what's it like just playing in front of your fans uh, in your own country? And how, how crazy can they be during like, for example, like high intense games, and uh, if you guys are trying to make the playoffs, or uh, how how are the fans uh, there? Oh, it's great! It's great, super great. The fans are awesome. We we actually we miss a lot of the fans now due to the yeah. the pandemic that we have going on now. You know, um, it, of course, we miss every sport sports team. You know, um, every sport team around the world right now they they're missing the fans and stuff but it's it's you know that the fans give us that extra the extra boost you know the extra shot of adrenaline so we miss them a lot hmm. i want to i want to point out um one of your notable games obviously a couple months ago playing against thailand and um you had a, a great game 19 points you're out there posterizing people can you talk about how that game felt in particular and, and maybe some of the best moments throughout your entire career. Well, that game, that game was pretty awesome. The thing about it, um, that game, it's like we had, because we had it in a pandemic, we had to, um, we, we were getting ready to leave a coach called Corona. Um, then we had to wait a few days before um, we we left to, before we went to Bahrain, Bahrain. Mm-hmm. and, you know, it, it was, um, we had tired legs going in. We were excited that we, you know, we trained three months for this window. So, you know, um, we were excited going in, then this happened and we had to, we had to travel eight, nine hours, then quarantine, then practice, then watch film, then you know, eat and then go play. Then we have to practice on the court. The court that we practice on, hmm. it wasn't even the court that we actually played on, you know. Um, so, you know, it was, a, it was a very stressful situation going into um, that second window. But at the same time, when we hit the court, you know, for sometimes you can see on some of the guys, we were very like sluggish, including myself. You know, but then we um we we stepped it up, mind over matter. We stepped it up, and then we got through it. Thailand, you know, um, they didn't have their best player with them, um, but they are a very very tough team, and you know they've they've been getting tougher and tougher over the years. So, you know, um, respect to Thailand, and it was a fun game for me. Period. Obviously, um, and also you had another game out there. You had, I think, you had forty-five points in one game. So uh, take me back to that game. What was that like? <laughs> and uh, forty-five points—that's that, crazy. Yeah, that that game um, was with my club in the Philippines, and we were going against um, Hinebra. Yeah, over there, you know, Colombian Chief versus Hinebra. And um, let me tell you, I was just in the zone. I was in the zone. Um, I always play with passion. Um, you know, shout out to the Filipino fans that came out, you know, they, you know, they respect me. And, and like I said, it goes right back to respecting the culture, right. um, you know, embracing people, you know, they hard earned money, you know, they spend on a ticket and you just, you got to come out there and entertain and, and, um, you know, show respect and, um, just perform, just perform. And I was in the zone and I was excited to play them because, we actually, we didn't win. We lost by three points. Um, but we had many, many opportunities to win that game. And it would have, it would have been the first, um, the first time in history that my team has beaten um, Hinebra. But we have a, 
we have another chance when um you know the pba opens back up again hmm. i want to ask about the overseas game um obviously we see some of the most incredible players in the nba come from overseas i've talked to Giannis, the greek freak he's called that for a reason obviously um, one of the best players in the NBA. Can you talk about what you see in the overseas game that makes it so competitive, that makes so many superstars? So overseas, they're not as athletic, but they're very smart. So it's it's more of a cerebral um, kind of game overseas. Um, you know, in Asia, you have a lot of shooters from Korea to Philippines to Indonesia to Taiwan to China. You know, you have a lot of shooters. You know, um, in the NBA, they're more athletic. And of course, now they're developing a lot of players, especially in the four and five position, they're developing um, a jump shot. So, you know, it's starting to, it start, it start, the difference between the overseas game and the NBA is in the NBA, they're more athletic. And once they start playing, um, you know, um, you know, it will be, it, it's a different kind of ball game. It's just like, it's unbelievable kind of basketball that's going on. Hmm. So this, this is a two-part question. So what have you been, obviously uh, we're still in this pandemic. So what have you been doing, uh, working on, uh, trying to get better on, at your game? So when, before the season opens back up and obviously I see, I see you on Instagram working hard in the gym and shooting up shots and doing, and doing everything. So what else have you been working on just to get, try, uh, to get better for next season? And the next question here, whoever doesn't, whoever doesn't know about you, what do you bring to the game? Um, well, basically, I'm a, I'm a four five. You know, I'm a, I started out as position five, but with my jump shot, you know, and my mobility, I, I'm more of a four five. And um, I've been working on just consistency. You know, um, my jump hooks, right, left, um, my jump shot, mid range, three. Um, my speed, you know, so I'm definitely, I'm definitely faster now mm -hmm. than I was um, last season. I'm definitely, definitely jumping higher now than um, last, than last season and just more explosive and decision making. So I try to get uh, other guys going also, you know, um, but I also read the situation and I'm a, I'm a great rebounder. You know, um, I run the floor probably faster than I'll say 90% of the bigs out there, if not a higher percentage. Um, and, and I bring a lot of energy, you know, I'm, I'm that energy kind of guy and I'm always positive and I love to entertain the crowd. And that's just who I am, you know, because basketball is all about entertainment. Right. So that's what I do, you know? So if you don't know me and, you know, and you want to get to know me, just take a look at my film, um, take a look at this, my posts on, on social media. It's, it's just c consistent work and constant work, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Throughout your career has an opportunity, like I'm, I'm talking years into the overseas career, has an opportunity presented itself to come to the NBA? And if it still does, would you take that? The opportunity has not presented itself yet, but I'm still waiting and I hope it does. But, um, you know, I continue to just keep working, keep working every single day. You never know. You never know what can happen. So I really don't think about that, you know, a lot because I don't want it to to distract me from the path that I'm on right now. Yeah. But if that was to happen, absolutely. That's a no brainer. You know, and plus, plus it will, um, the kids, kids who came from my position as a, as an adolescent, uh, when I, I was, I should say, when I was younger, you know, in the position that I was in, you know, it'll give them more motivation. Like, hey, Lester has done it, you know, Lester has done this, so um, I could do this also, you know. Follow up. Do you keep up with the NBA still? From um, as far as watching, I'm sure you know a lot of it. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm in the gym with a lot of NBA guys every day, mm -hmm. so I have to, I have to keep up with the NBA, you know. So, like, obviously, since you're in Miami, have you been watching the Miami Heat more? Or uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I watch. I watch a little bit of everybody. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, for you, uh, what are you most looking forward to 
when the season opens up back for you guys and uh, when you go back to Indonesia. So what are you most look what are you most looking forward to the next season with your teammates and your coaching staff? Just um improvement, constant improvement, you know, and of course I'm looking forward to seeing the fans, you yeah. know. That that's number one actually, you know, because I know as a team we have improved, but we need that extra jolt of energy, which comes from the fans. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I want to go back to the the following American sports. Um, have you kept up with March Madness? I know it's over now, but did you keep up with it a little bit? Um, not really. Yeah, okay. Honestly, not really. Did you watch the the championship game? I'm asking because I was out there um, in Indianapolis covering it. So I I watched a little bit of it until I saw the score started getting away a little bit and i'm like yeah this is over <laughs> hey defense wins championships right yeah 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 absolutely so um so what advice would you give uh, to these young kids young athletes um obviously um you already said in the big before but what else would you give them especially young kids that are trying to get to their goals you have a dream never give up never give up and always put in always put in work you know, you have, you know, if you're good at one thing, work on something else, work at something that you're not good at, get out on the beach. You know, if you're not close to a beach, um, get some bands and work on your speed, work, work on your agility, work on your rebound and work on your defense, work on your jump shot. Just um, try to have um, consistency in your game. Um, also, you know, watch videos on YouTube. YouTube is there for that. You know, um, just, just con continue to learn all the time. I got to give a quick shout out to my school who just won the state championship for basketball and I'm in the freshman program. So I'm trying to grow a little bit. Is there a specific drill that you would recommend specific things to work on as far as, you know, what to focus on more? Is it strength? Is it footwork? Um, well, in basketball, you always want to work on both your strength and footwork. So if you're strong and you have footwork, you're pretty much unstoppable. If you're strong, you have footwork and you have a, a soft touch around the basket or a soft touch outside, you know, it, it, you have those three things, you know, you're pretty much unstoppable. Hmm. But that comes with repetition. So that's what you have to do. You have to do repetitive work. So, um, so for our show, we do this fun little segment called the rapid fire segment. Um, are you up for this rapid fire segment? Yeah, sure. Let's, let's. All right, uh, Kawhi Leonard's laugh or Kevin Hart's laugh? Uh, uh, I like Kawhi. <laughs> favorite food? Um, my favorite food, um, no carb pasta with clams. Hmm. Um, so outside of your forty-five point game and the and then the, <clears throat> the, the other game that you had, what other game mem memorable games that you had in your career outside of, outside of those uh, two games that we mentioned earlier? Um, going up against um, Terrence Jones. Okay. Yeah, we we both had forty. We went up. We went up. <laughs> he was such a good a good guy to go up against, man. Um, and then also the San Miguel game. You know that I had forty points that game also. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that was that was a cool game. Also, my my entry game we didn't win, but um, it was a it was a good game when I um, first got into the PBA because I've been trying to get into the PBA for so long. Right. And you know, they only, they only were taking guys with um, NBA resume and yeah. stuff like that. So I had a chip on my shoulder going into the PBA. So now I'm in the PBA, you know, I still have a chip on my shoulder. It's all about respect and it's all about playing hard and, and not being a, a pushover team and that's for any team that that i i go on you know what is your favorite country that you've been able to play in my favorite country um you know dominican republic i played in dominican republic the fans are wild Man. you know that was cool that was very very cool um of course philippines and of course, Indonesia. So, uh, you know, I don't have a specific one, but those three countries right there, Hong Kong was pretty cool. Hmm. Hong Kong, Hong Kong was cool, you know, and Hong Kong was like my entry, you know, my, 
Hong, Hong Kong was like the, the entry to Asia, you know, for me. So I really, I really, um, but those three countries, uh, Indonesia, Philippines, and um, Santo Domingo, I should say Dominican Republic, you know, that was, you know, those experience, experiences are amazing. Um, do you have any like uh, Kobe memories throughout your career? Any what? A Kobe, Kobe Bryant memories. Um, when he dropped sixty points. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then this was a Kobe memory. Probably a lot of people remember it, but he was driving down the lane. Um, I think uh, he was playing the Brooklyn Nets, and I think um, I forgot the other guy, Chris Humphreys, went up to try to block him. And um, I forgot the other guy's name, but he was a very good player also. And he just dunked on both of them. Wow. And I don't know how he did that, but <laughs> it just went in. Wow. Who do you think is going to win the NBA championship this year? Um, you know, I'm going to say the Brooklyn Nets. Oof. The, re the reason why I'm going to say the Brooklyn Nets is because of um, – James Harden, he's an offensive juggernaut, um, and he's a he's a prime facilitator. He's very smart. Um, he's very consistent. Also, Kyrie Irving is a very explosive offensive player. Kevin Durant, he can play both sides. He's very long. On top of that, um, pause. Um, <laughs> and, and then you have. Blake Griffin with the with his strength. Yeah. You have um DeAndre Jordan. You have um what's his name? Lamarcus um, Claxton. Yeah, Claxton. Yeah, Lamarcus Aldridge, of course, which is a beast down low with 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 a soft touch. And then you have Brown. I don't know his first name. Is it Bruce? Is his yeah, first Bruce, name? Bruce Brown. Yep, Bruce Brown. Yeah. Joe Harris. Joe Harris. Yeah, you have Joe Harris, who's is a very consistent three point shooter. Andy Shaman. Uh, they, they have weapons yeah. on top of weapons, man. And it, it could be overwhelming for LeBron and AD mm -hmm. um, and the sporting cast, you know. Um, but it we'll see. Things happen. Well, um, tonight, I think the Nets and Lakers are playing tonight, so we'll get a good good see at a uh, potential final matchup. And I don't think LeBron and – You know, I, 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 don't, I don't count this one. Mm -hmm. I don't count. Yeah. The reason why I don't count it because they're not they're not fully loaded. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't count it. But it's a good it's a it's a good game to watch. You we'll know? get a chance to see what Andre Drummond is. Yeah. yeah. Well, Andre. <laughs> well, I've been training with Andre Drummond, um, uh -huh. and he, I he's ready. Yeah. You know, he's ready. You I know? don't need and I Don't listen to the media. Don't get into the media. All that stuff. Mm -hmm. Once LeBron and AD's back. Andre Drummond will be able to compliment them yeah. on even a higher scale, you know? I interviewed Andre when he was in Detroit a little bit ago, and he was a superstar for Detroit a few years ago, and that was definitely a cool conversation. One thing you cannot take away from Drummond is he's a unstoppable rebounder. Yeah. He's very athletic, you know, and – He's been training with Remy workouts down here. So he has added to his game. You know, not saying that he needs to do that, but it's good to have, you know. So he's ready. He's hmm. ready. I believe. Hmm. Speaking of uh, who are the other NBA players that you usually work out with in, in the gym? Well, Trevor Ariza right now, he's doing pretty well okay. um, with the Miami Heat. Yeah. Um you have Marcus Thornton, who's shooting the lights out of the ball. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, um, and he's a free agent also, so I, yeah. I hope he gets picked up also because he's a, uh, he's an amazing guy. And on top of that, um, very professional. You know, um, you have Michael Beasley. Yeah. You know, who's uh, offensively, you know, um, I'll, I'll say not a lot of people could really stay in front of him, mm -hmm. you know offensively um who else you have uh brandon knight mm -hmm. you know who who's uh super fast you know um 
you got to gotta be able to stay similar to Kyrie, to tell you the truth. You know, um, it's it's just on um, who else? That's who I, that's who I've been with so far. Okay. You know, um, and yeah, that's who I've been with so far. You know, so hmm. when you look at at all the things that are outside of the game, you know, seeing players able to have a voice now, seeing players with the ability to use their platform in a good way. Um, one, how important is that for the game to be able to? say it, it's bigger than basketball oh this is very important because you have to be able to use your platform to be able to um dictate the narrative that could be a false narrative you understand so you have to be able to um share your thoughts do right. your research um also and share your opinions you know um inspire others to to do their research and also voice their own opinions and i i think it's great i think it's great it um it allows it it allows us to be able to really write the narrative and also it allows us to also um how can i say this also be able to persuade people from you know, persuade them, changing their thoughts that they, they, they have, the thoughts that they had before to looking at what it is, what it is right now. So perspective. Yeah. You know, from, from that perspective. Yeah. So, you know, um, I think it's great. I think it's great. Use your platform to be able to change, to make change, make a difference. Um, and, and also educate, mm -hmm. you know, so once you, as an athlete, once you start talking, once once you you zoom in on this, um, you know, once you start zooming in on this um this issue that we have in the community, right, or even in the world, you know, kids that were not looking at this issue before, they will zoom in on it, start studying it, and say, yeah, we need to, you know, and start voicing their own opinions, and then getting more involved. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, favorite uh, DMX uh, song of all time? Um, Slipping and Falling. Hmm. Yeah. I was actually blasting that yesterday. Oh, wow. It's such a cool song. Yeah. I was, I was, I was listening to DMX, you know, um, since I was young, man, because, yeah. you know, when I first moved to the United States, I lived in Yonkers. I lived, you know, I lived from where the locks, the locks were from. Mm-hmm the locks are from and dmx lived about 10 minutes away so we'll always see them in that area but then i moved to long island and but i still i still kept that dmx you know the locks school street you know um rough riders all that stuff you know it's cool cool stuff not what yeah. i listen to not what i listen to now but when i'm in the gym i need some hype yeah. music so, yeah. You're obviously a little bit of a high flyer yourself. I want to ask about the NBA dunk contest. It seems like the star level of the dunk contest has started to go down a little bit. Do you think the dunk contest could eventually move to being completely eliminated? And the three-point contest is obviously um, more hyped up now at this point. What are your thoughts on that? Um, so what I think about the dunk contest – these guys are super athletic, you know, um, they will never eliminate it. It's just that you see something over and over and over and over again. I'm still seeing the same windmills, the same between the legs, the same that, you know, we get tired of that, you know, but when you see a big man or, you know, shooting threes or Steph Curry shooting threes, like the way that he's shooting threes, then it's, it gets pretty, like, you're pretty intrigued by it, you know? So, I think it's, you know, times have changed. You know, it's much more fun to see a big man hit a three-point shot, you know, in, especially in a three-point contest than to see a 6'10 or 6'9, 6'11 guy in a dunk contest doing a windmill. You know, I'm, I'm saying, but these guys are super athletic. They're actually more athletic now 
than they were back in the day. So maybe maybe we'll see we'll see what happens. Hmm. So the before we get to the last three things here, um, I just I'm just curious for you. Um, have, you, have you gotten to play uh, all positions, point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward? Uh, obviously, you play center and power forward, but have you got to play the other three positions? And if not, are you willing to do all, all five? Um, well, I just do what I do what's needed, yeah. you know, what my team needs, you know, and I read the situation. So if if like um, my point guard is getting trapped, I'm going to push the ball up and he comes, he receives the ball, and then we set up the offense. I just do what need what needs to be done. That's all. I don't get out of character at right. all. Yeah. So the last three things here, um, our team, we partnered up with two companies recently. Um, one, The first one was is my aunt's company called Eplin X Cosmetics. So if your girlfriend or your mo mother or loved ones want to uh, check that products, I'm going to send you the promo code is NR20. And I'll send you the link so they can check it out, uh, Eplin X Cosmetics. And then the other company we partnered up with called Buck and Beards. It's like a for, for the males, a beer hairstyle product too. The same promo code NR20. So we're just we're just trying to help them promote their company so we can get more traffic for the show. So I'm gonna absolutely just 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 DM me. Yeah. 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 And then uh, also we have we're part of the Hugh Jackson Foundation. Um, we're trying to help uh, prevent human trafficking and making sure the kids stay safe and the community stays safe. So I'll send you that page so you can check out that foundation. Absolutely. Send, yeah. send, send me that. Yeah. And Coach the, Jackson is a, a former NFL coach yeah. for the Browns and Raiders, and um, he's looking to get back in into the NFL. Mm -hmm. And the last thing here, uh, would you like to say anything to all the nurses, doctors, and essential workers right now? Or just stay safe and continue to um, keep up the good work that you're doing. And, and, and we thank you and we appreciate you. And, and um, you know, we send blessings for, to you and your family. Well said. And there it is. That wraps up episode 745 for the NR, NR Hour Sports Show with basketball player Lester, uh, Lester Prosper from Indonesia. Uh, obviously, he's still in Miami right now working on for the next season. Hopefully, they open up back soon to continue to continue the grind, keep working hard. Hopefully, you get an opportunity in the NBA, but just focus on uh, – Oh, oh, in uh, Indonesia, and uh, we're, we're rooting for you. And uh, thank you again for coming on. And uh, we would like to have you back as a returning guest so you can meet the full team eventually. But uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Just but let I'm, me know. Let me know whenever you're ready. I'm, I'm, I'm a big supporter. I'm always going to support, especially guys like you. You know, and your friend who's 14 years old. That is, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, anytime you guys need me on your show, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll come on. Let yeah. me know. Uh, you and your family stay safe. Thank you very much. Blessings, guys. Thank you. Peace.